Um, when I first um, travelled to Jamaica. Fields of sugarcane, <coughs> fertilised by the graves of slaves that worked their days, down the road from where my father's from, Crofts Hill, Clarendon. Abundantly banana trees, coconut palms and guava leaves hang a world away from Rubicon. Scoop out the coconut jelly with makeshift machete-made spoons, once done, ready to line the stage for the graves of my ancestors. 1898, the birth of my namesake. 50 years from the emancipation of slaves. This woman that raised my father a generation away from a pain not in our memories, but I believe and must still remember these parts of our personal histories, as I do on the day of my grandmother's wake. The first day we've been acquainted, a relationship separated by the Atlantic. The final resting place, the graves of the slaves that didn't make it, just cargo on the slave ships. There is no irony, our story, a legacy of this triangle trading. Prayer book air just circulates and let me tell you, my brethren make up tributes to the Saviour. Hallelujah and yes Jesus, amuse me, a distant relative and stranger to a culture I've longed for since I can remember. Cousins and uncles I didn't realise are relatives through the eyes of a young kid fast talking, while I'm brethren, curry goat and planting. Aki and so <laughs> <laughs> Um, snapper with eyes watching, the smell of salt fish boiling, put me off seafood when I could see the food looking, accusatory before we cook it. <laughs> Mutton patties and fried fish, my British friends didn't understand him the way we did with his Creole English. Patois and wagwans, dunzai and chars integrate into the vernacular and soon afterwards redefine what it means to be English. Wagwan blood, the streets greeting, changing the meaning of being second generation. When a culture felt a part of becomes more mainstream, changes what it means to be British Jamaican. So here I am in the fatherland, seven miles of white sand, familiar lilting voices rising and falling, intertwined with the sound of waves and the sellers calling. Wondering if this is where I belong. Roadside tracks and dancehall songs, or am I wrong to feel a part of it, an imposter with my British English? So long while I am blood with a Birmingham accent, I'd never really given much thought to what cultural appropriation meant. Is it a compliment dressed in a British accent or detachment from the place it came from? Immigration into assimilation to become part of a great nation, to become part of a population hostile to the, co the colours of other. Rivers of blood in amongst green, yellow and black, different shades of empire which require people for hire in exchange for indefinite leave to remain. No Irish, no blacks, no dogs yet. Royal Britannia called out to us with the promise of a mother's love. But the mother didn't nurture us. From a motherland murderous to the motherland superfluous, we are the lonely Londoners playing dominoes with our island overtones as the motherland nurtures us with prospects, opportunities. Government-sponsored university education and lifetime student loan fees, jerk chicken and carnival vibes, gang culture and knife crime, unwarranted searches and the white flight. Jungle is massive, garage raving, reggae and dancehall in Dalston dancing, rhyme MCs and music made in basements, the real punk music, pirate radio stations. But what have we left behind? I thought I was culturally Jamaican, but I realised since I arrived that being second generation has different connotations. I am British, English, a bit Irish and Jamaican, wagwan blood, curry goat and plantain, garage, Yorkshire puddings and grime. This is all part of my culture, but which culture is mine? Thank you.